Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I recently took a week off work to visit my friends in Seattle in the Olympic Peninsula. It was a very much needed vacation. I am now back in my home studio today, just throwing a couple of pieces of mugs here from my local ceramic studio. Before I went on vacation, I was asked by my local ceramic studio to join their online shop and be one of the ceramicists on their website. I was very flattered and gladly joined them. One of the things they asked me to do is to provide five pieces of the same item for three different items. So I would have to give them 15 pieces in total to start. This was sort of a light bulb uh, that went off in my head because for months I've been struggling with keeping up with my own inventory online because I usually have pieces and I have recently done a couple of local markets where I have sold a lot of pieces which made keeping inventory of what was sold and what was still needed to be pho photographed really hard to track. When I started my own website last November, I used to take a long time photographing every single piece of my work. I would wait for the perfect sunny day, set up the photo shoot station with a chair and a piece of poster board outside. Um, I was terrified that even the most minor differences in size or color would upset you guys, that you would feel like the description was not accurate enough or that you received an item that wasn't what you thought it would be. Now that I have sold in a couple of local markets as well as online, I realize that almost all of you guys are just extremely happy to see the little creatures I make and that you're more than happy to support my art, which I am so very grateful for. Also in this period of time, because I needed to produce many pieces for the local markets, I am getting better at making identical pieces or very similar pieces of work. So what I'm making here are about six pink boba mugs and six jacklow planters. And throwing them and sculpting them in a batch made the process a lot easier than before. Summer here is, has been very hot. It has been 100 degrees and where my pieces would dry out way too fast. And they tend to have hairline cracks when they dry too fast. After I finished these pieces, I would wrap them up in plastic and let them slow dry to prevent hairline cracks. I first started trimming my pieces around what potters call the leather hard stage, which is when the clay is in a state where it feels like a stiff leather belt. Um, but recently I started trimming around leather soft stage, which is earlier than leather hard. It's more like a mozzarella cheese stage, if you will. I find that this way it gives you more time to sculpt the features, the jackalope's features on there before the pot gets too dry. Here I am attaching some handles for my boba mug and then later on I will attach the sculpting features of the jackalope onto my jackalope planter. I've discovered the creature jackalope when I was playing an online game a long time ago in college. Jackalope is a North America folklore mythical creature. It's mostly a jackrabbit uh, and an antelope, uh, hence the combined word jackalope. Um, it also has some fascinating sources. Apparently it may have been inspired by seeing bunnies with a virus called, uh, I think I'm gonna get this wrong, a shop. Uh, Piloma virus that causes the bunnies to have horn like tumors, which is doesn't sound very uh, sounds very painful. So here I'm attaching the bunny ears first, then I attach the little antlers before right in front of the ears. 
these pieces will be wrapped in plastic and slow dried uh, on my shelf for about a week or so and it will go into the kiln for first round of fire which is called bisque fire after the bisque fire I will use paint brushes to brush on the glaze which is another slow and detailed process the glazed pieces will go then going to the kiln again at a higher degree of firing for about 2000 plus degrees then it becomes a final product While the pieces are drying, I took a week off and flew to Seattle to see some friends. This is the first time I've been to Seattle. It's such a gorgeous place in the summer. I was told winter can be a little dreary, but there is no dreariness in sight. Here's Lake Union from my friend's apartment building, and we saw a lot of seaplanes taking off and landing on the lake. Google's headquarters is right down here as well, or one of their office buildings. I saw a little cat um, at our Airbnb. He was perching by the corner of this tree, waiting for the birds to come down uh, from the, to eat from the bird feeder, and then he would launch at them and uh, have a little breakfast himself. And of course, I have to stop at this green tea ice cream place. I really didn't think that we were gonna eat all of that ice cream, but turned out we did. <laughs> um, my first time riding a ferry uh, with the car. This was very interesting. The workers, they're so efficient. They got us on a boat and left within I think the 10 minutes that we were there. The view, which you're gonna see here in a second, is the skyline of Seattle. It is absolutely fantastic, and the weather is so gorgeous. We saw some cargo boats and some crews in the distance, and the, I don't know what it's called, Seattle Needle, is that right? Uh, in the distance as well. And then once we took off from Seattle into Bainbridge, you can see Mount Rainier in the background, which is gorgeous. On one of the days, we hiked Mount Townsend. On top of the mountain, you can see Mount Rainier in the distance, Seattle, and also Mount Baker on the other side. In my camera, Mount Rainier is very, very small, but in real life, it's actually very magnificent in compared to the rest of the scenery. My friend's dad worked on this boat for seven years to try and restore it. I think it was from the 1920s or 1930s. And this is basically like a three, bed to bath tiny house here on the ocean and my friend is getting her stuff ready for our little day hike here is right here down the steps is another bedroom for two people one of the national parks that we visited you can go crabbing. We saw a couple of people just with water shoes and a bucket and they go up and down this coastline 
and they just pick up crabs in the ocean and then they cook them right there by the beach and eat them. This is really, really cute. It has been a few months since I properly took time off with work travel and art markets in the beginning half of the year. It was hectic for a while. The Olympic Peninsula also reminds me how much I miss the ocean. I used to live outside of LA where the beach is so accessible. I love the sound of the waves and I can spend hours walking up and down the beach. And now I live in a place where that's not so easily accessible. Uh, it really makes me uh, cherish the moments that I used to have. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.